Hi everybody and welcome to WTF Hammer Underworlds. Uh, today's video is going to be a little bit different than my review and balancing videos. Uh, it's actually going to be a tutorial video as to how to use the online vassal tool, uh, specifically the one that I myself have been designing, which is the Warhammer Underworlds multiplayer version, which can accommodate three to four players and officially as of today can accommodate six players across various forms of official gameplay rules. Uh, I figured I'd start this thing off by just informing people who weren't aware of how Vassal works, just how to load up your modules. So in the Warhammer Underworlds multiplayer Discord channel, I've included a link to Google Drive where I've posted this specific mod, which is version 1.3, which you can download. Uh, once you've downloaded it, the way to open it is to open Vassal, assuming you've downloaded Vassal. You may want to update it though, because the latest version is 3.3.2, so yours have to, has to be up to that version in order to actually open this newer module. You're gonna click File, Open Module, find the file in your Downloads folder or wherever it was that you saved it, load it up, and then it should just open up. It'll have to tilt the tiles. And once that's done, the mod itself will open and you'll be able to play. So I just gotta wait for this to load up. And you're gonna get a pop-up screen that looks like this. Uh, just look for a game online, and then you can start playing with your friends who are also looking for games online. And from here, you can actually have the mod itself. So first thing you're going to want to do when you want to play a game is just go to New Game and type in the name of the game that you want to host. So I'll just put Test as an example. If your friends have already made a game, you can just either double-click on that folder or right-click and choose Join Game or Join Room. Like, so I'm already in the room, so I obviously can't do it. And you can also lock the room if you don't want to let anybody else into the room. Once you've done that, you can just click File, New Game, and then it'll prompt you to choose which player you want to be. And you'll notice you can go up to six players, but in the basic format of the game, you can only play one, player one to player four. So we'll ignore players five and six for now. I'll explain those later. And I'll just randomly take player two. Okay, so I'm joining in as player two. You'll see that some new icons become available up here. And the way it works in the multiplayer, which is slightly different from the one versus one version that's organized by Shuby, is that there are two boards to play off of. So before I even go into the details, I just want to give a big shout out, a big thanks to Shuby, who has basically been acting as my tech support, helping me to create a three to four player version of his module. And a similarly huge thank you to Astro Paul, who is the one responsible for photoshopping all of the images that I use and has given me many specific images just for my module, which I know took him a lot of time to do, and I very much appreciate it. All right, so back to the tutorial. So what you're gonna to wanna to open here is the play area. So that'll pop up a window. So this is the area where you'll be placing your boards. You can just resize it as you see fit. And unlike Shuby's module, you also have a card area. So I had to make a separate area that was unique just to cards, because to accommodate three to four players on one map took a lot of space, especially when we start putting all the boards down. So I had no choice but to put the cards on a separate board, all to, on a separate map altogether. But I'll be explaining it all. Uh, so the way to use the module is pretty straightforward. You'll choose your warband among the icons that are listed on top, which includes all the way up to Morgwaith, which is the newest release as of August something. So I'll just choose Morgwaith for fun. She's going to pop up in the second player position, her with all of her acolytes. Player one units would pop up over here. Player three units would pop up down here and player four over here. So just so you can know how everything is laid out. And they're even color coded. So player two will all have beautiful, We'll all have blue fighters, uh, yellow for player one, and so on. Uh, you can move the tokens, the fighter tokens around. I'd recommend just leaving the cards where they, where they are. As your units get damaged, you can just right click and add a wound, and they'll take a wound, and it'll also appear on their fighter card, as you can see over here. You can either right click and inspire them, or press Control F, and they will inspire. And if you want to read anything that's on the card, you just have to hover your cursor over it, and everything will zoom in for you. Aside from that, to roll off, you just press Control R. So the player two dice right over here rolled off. So there's a separate one for player four, player one, etc. Uh, you have round counters in the middle to keep track of your rounds. You can right click and go next round as necessary. Also, when you press the clear tokens button at the end of a round, it'll automatically increase the round number. And once you spawn a warband, their activation tokens will pop up here as well. So you can just flip through those as you use your activations to help keep track. Um, aside from that, you can grab objective tokens from up top. In my version, the objective tokens go up to number nine. So if you're playing a three-player game, just obviously 
ignore those number eight and nine tokens. You can either put them back in the stack or just put them to the side and then just draw till you get number six and seven. And at the end of this stack, we all, there's also the hazard tokens that you can place across the board. Boards you can grab from a second components tab up here. You need to make a bit of space for it though because the main board covers it. So you can just grab a board, place it. It'll snap into place in a hex grid. You can place your unit on it, organize as necessary until all four players have set up their four boards, however you want them to be set up. So I'm obviously not doing it correctly here because I'm just trying to show you how it works. Once you're no longer highlighting a board or an objective token, you have to press shift to click on them in order to move them. And the whole point is just that you don't accidentally grab an objective token and throw it when you're trying to move your fighters around. Aside from that, you have charge tokens in the middle top here, move tokens, guard tokens, and counter tokens. Although the counter tokens aren't super necessary because all game mechanics that require counters have basically been included in those respective cards. And that basically does it for the main board. Uh, as far as the card map is concerned, what you have to do is you have to right click on either the power deck or objective deck and just load your deck from a save file that you would have downloaded from the YAWUDB website uh, when you download Vassal decks. So I'm not gonna be doing a tutorial on that. If you have any questions about it, you can just post it in the comments and I'll explain. And the additional feature that I've included here is that if you press this icon right here at the top of the card area, the hazard deck will spawn. So the hazard deck is unique to my version of the game. It doesn't exist in Shuby's version. So if you want it, things to get a little bit more chaotic and messy, you can include the hazard rules from the Dreadfane rulebook, which I'm also gonna be discussing in a moment. So that basically covers how you play Warhammer Underworlds through the multiplayer mod that I prepared up to three to four players. But another thing that I've included, which is unique to my module is that I've included all of the special game formats that were officially released from Games Workshop. Uh, first, I'll just start with the board. So if you notice here, you have championship boards, which are, what, which are the boards that are available to use in championship play, and also the old rotated out relic boards. And I've also included the Dreadfane boards with the help of Astropol, who prepared these images for me. And if you wanna play just a simple 1v1 Dreadfane style game, you just put one board down and then you can fit all, war, all units from two warbands on the one board. Now, as far as the components go, as I mentioned, I've included all of the special game rules. So if you cycle through this, you can see tokens, dice, feature tokens, warbands, cards, avatar of the year grub, and then right at the end here are the special game modes. So there have been five special game modes released, usually through White Dwarf Magazine by Games Workshop. There's the Glass Mad Gargant, the Apex Predator, a Crushing Terror, and Grand Avatars. So I'm gonna go over those in a second. Uh, I'm just gonna close all this down to clean up the map area here. So what I did is I closed all my screens. I'm gonna click File, Close Game. I'm not gonna to bother to save it, but you can obviously save it if you wanted to pick up a game later on, but I'm not gonna do that. All right, so that's closed. I'm gonna go New Game, load up a new one. I'll choose Player 3 this time just for fun so you can see where the units pop up. Open the play area, see everything's all cleared because I have a new game going on. I'll just choose Sepulchral Guard over here. And they're gonna pop up in the player three area with the player three dice. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention also is that you can roll the dice by just grabbing the ones you want, moving them to wherever you wanna move them. You don't even have to move them if you don't want to. We press Control F and it will roll the dice. And everything is documented in the log on the main, uh, area over here. So I close the boards tab here. You can see that I rolled a fury, I rolled a support attack, whatever. Now, sorry to get back to the special game modes. So we'll start with the glass mad gargant. So through the components menu and the special game modes tab, you can find the glass mad gargant. You just have to grab his fighter card, grab his fighter token, and then similarly, as you need to, you can add wounds, which will apply itself both to the fighter token and to the card. And with Control F, you could inspire the Chaos Gargant. Hovering your cursor over will zoom in on whatever it is you need to zoom in on. Same deal with the Crushing Terror, the new solo method of play that was just released as a free online PDF. So you can find the Crushing Terror through the components menu, grab his card, grab his token, just like the Chaos Gargant, you could add wounds, you could inspire with Control F, very simple. 
And I've also modified the round counter so that I can actually go up to round number four to accommodate this particular type of play style. I included the Apex Predator card, in case you wanna play by Apex Predator rules. And I've even included the newest unreleased method of playing, which is the Grand Avatars, which was released at Adepticon for those few people who actually attended. So all four cards are here, the Order, Chaos, Death, and Destruction cards for your use if you decide to play by this style. And that covers all of the special game modes that are easier to play off of the components tab. But I've also created a method of playing a six player game via Arena Mortis. So Arena Mortis was a special method of gameplay where you, where you can choose just one fighter and put them in a sort of death battle arena against five other people, allowing you to actually play six people in this game. So whenever you start a new game, you would have noticed how you can play up to six players. It's specifically for Arena Mortis that you can play players five and six. Players five and six will not apply when you're playing on the play area or the card area, but only on the Arena Mortis map. And it's pretty straightforward how to play here. I put a whole pile of dice around. So you can just grab the dice you need and share them amongst yourselves. You can take a board, a normal board, not a Dreadfane board, and just place it here. It fits perfectly in that slot. You just have to rotate it. Boom, so this will be the area that you play off of. You have the Cataphrane token over here, uh, which you could figure out how to use when you read through the rule book. You have a round counter, which goes up to round three. You have initiative cards, which you could divvy out and then flip with control F to find out what the order of play is. And you also have your glory tokens, which I forgot to mention, which is actually in the card area as well, where you can add glory and glory and remove glory as necessary to keep tally of your glory points that exists on the arena mortis board as well and you have special activation tokens for this six player way of playing furthermore you can upload your decks here just like you can in the card area and you can do it two ways you can either make a 10 card gambit deck and a 10 card upgrade deck and then just save them and upload them separately or what i like to do is i just build a 20 card power deck upload it and then just divvy up the cards, putting the gambits in this power deck and then the upgrades in this deck. I just find it easier, but either way will work. You might ask, how do you actually get your fighters and cards? Because in the play area, there are buttons that spawn all that stuff. Well, I didn't want to make buttons to spawn the almost 100 or so character options that you have. So what you can do is you can go back to the components area, which has warbands as an option. So click on Warbands. Then you just have to go through the seasons. You can go Shadespire, Nightfall, or Beastgrave. So I'm just going to go through Beastgrave. Uh, I'll choose a random faction here, Thundrix Profiteers, and I'll take Lund. So I got Lund. I'm going to play as Lund. I take his fighter card, take his fighter token, and just like with all the other fighter cards and fighter tokens. If I add wounds, it applies to both cards and through control F, you could inspire the fighter. So as you can see, I added a lot of new options to this multiplayer version. I want to make it the most ultimate multiplayer experience that can be played online with Warhammer Underworlds. All the special game modes are included. You can play three to four players without any hassle. And I've even included one more thing, which I'm gonna show right now, which are the rule books. So through the help menu, you can actually get access to all the rule books. The only one I'm missing is the main rule book, the Beastgrave rule book, because I didn't have time to upload it yet. But by the time there's a new release in September, when I make my next update to the module version 1.4, I'll be including the Beastgrave rule book as well. So what you do is you just have to click on the rule book and it'll pop up as an HTML. Dreadfane will pop up as a PDF, but either way, you can have full access to all of the rules and you could play through them and you could re reference the rules as necessary as you see fit. So that basically does it for my video. Hope you enjoyed. Hope this was helpful for you. Uh, if you like the work that I do, because this actually took a really long time to make this module, you can reward me by liking and subscribing to my channel. And you could even go watch my other videos, my review videos, my balancing videos, uh, help to promote the channel. I'd appreciate it. And if you have any questions or comments or ideas, you can just comment below. So that does it for me today. And I hope you all have a nice day.